What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. Uh, this is the home of a team that just won Game 7 on the road uh, to close out the series against the Sacramento Kings. I know there's a lot of y'all out there didn't think we could do this. Um, yeah, here we are. I know a lot was said about the road record. Back-to-back -back road wins for those that don't believe. Uh, the playoffs, there's just something different about the playoffs, and you figure stuff out, and that's what we like to do. It's a lot to talk about. Uh, obviously, we need to talk about our game, but also the rest of the playoffs, man. The playoffs are really heating up. Some tough matchups. Uh, but first, uh, before we get into all of those things, let's talk about it. Warriors top the Kings, 120 to 100 at the Golden One Center. Uh, we lit the beam. There would be no beam being lit on top of Golden One or wherever that light is coming from. We lit the beam. And it was absolutely wonderful. Um, some quick takeaways. Number one, I did not think I felt like their crowd was nervous, A, or B, fans may have gotten priced out because it was a game seven and the fans that were there at other games, I just can't in my heart believe that those were the same fans. And saying that, um, the atmosphere was still electric, incredible to play in, but I just didn't feel like those were the same fans from the previous game. Could have been, and they just really maybe had been silenced and knew what happened game five when they were a little over the top and didn't summon that same energy. Uh, and then maybe Steph Curry just sent them night-night, and that's, that's what it was. But <clears throat> that was a little different, um, at least it felt like, which I've never experienced that, playing in game sevens. Playing a game seven in, against the Clippers? Played in game seven at Houston and now sat. Those are the game sevens at home versus the Cavs, at home versus OKC. But that just felt a little different. Anyway, um, let's get into the game. Uh, we need to start no further than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Steph Curry. 50 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Guy did everything. 20 for 38 from the field, 7 for 18 from three. It's so funny because that guy is so amazing, so incredible. And after years of doing this, like you kind of just know when he got that look, <laughs> you know when he locked in, and you know when he's just not. Like losing isn't an option. Like there's times where he go in this mode where you can't lose. You're not going to lose. And at no point throughout that game, you know, like you go through the game and like you had these different emotions and thoughts. And at no point throughout that game did I think we were going to lose that game. At no point. Um, Steph was absolutely incredible. Uh, again, just like game three, masterful. Slowed the tempo to the wherever he wanted it. When he wanted to push the tempo, tempo was gone. When he wanted to slow it down, slow it down and got to everything that he wanted to get to. And it was absolutely incredible. Um, incredible to watch, incredible to be a part of. I'm not sure. Um, for those of you that didn't watch but are hearing this, uh, all you needed to see for me was wherever Steph Curry was, I was either trying to get him the ball with a pass or go set a screen and then get out of his way. And he did the rest. Um, first time in the history of Game 7s, the NBA, that someone scored 50 points. How insane is that? We talk all these great performances, game seven performances, and Steph Curry has the best one ever. And as you know, I'm not a big like, oh, man, you score, like, this is great, like, whoever scores the most point. Number one, don't anybody just score 50 points in game seven. Hence, hence the fact it has not been done. Or just go off in game sevens normally. But, like, 
that's goat stuff, man. Like you, you when you speak of Game Seven, his name will always be mentioned in the great Game Sevens, and like to go on the road, hostile environment, and do that against a young team that just called us old. <laughs> Um, that just say, you know, we know those guys are old. It's one, this is shorter turnaround. Um, the last game, I honestly thought they were looked a little gassed to me, um, as opposed to the old guys looking a little gassed. Um, looked like they ran out of gas and hope and wins, and we move on. But um, Steph. After game six, I saw Tim uh, something that Tim Kawakami said. Uh, Jackson and Faye brought it to me from, from the podcast, um, from The Athletic. Tim Kawakami, I've known him since I got drafted here. He's a longtime Bay Area sports writer. And he said, uh, I'm going to read his quote. He said, the locker room was empty for a while, except for Steph, Clay, and Draymond. They weren't talking to each other. They were just sitting there. It did feel like they were just kind of summoning energy. They just kind of were sitting there. I've watched them a lot through the years, and I had never really seen that. What was that? Um, We all were sitting there. Number one, we were doing uh, recovery stuff a little longer than most, um, just making sure, you know, you get to a point in your career where you – dialed in and you're going to do everything, not cut any corners, you know, every little thing that you can do to maximize recovery. Because in the words of Malik Monk, it was a short turnaround. And so you're kind of doing like prepping like it's a back-to-back game. While you're, and that's the recovery cycle you're going through. And so number one, we have been doing that. But then we're just kind of sitting in the locker room because like, I'm not going to lie, man, game six, that was a gut punch. Like, you come out with the opportunity to close out a series it's a young, scrappy team. And like they they destroyed, they manhandled us in game six. Manhandled. And you felt it. And it wasn't like a silence of like, we're scared, we don't know what's to come. It was just like, damn. And that, like, Wow, and so you're just sitting there thinking and you're replaying plays and we're all just kind of sitting in there. And we didn't need to say much. We didn't say much. Ultimately, we end up saying, all right, fellas, I'll see y'all tomorrow. But that night, that night, I sent those two guys a text message. And I just sent them some of my thoughts. And it was actually a text that I was going to send to our group chat, our team group chat. And I was like, nah, let me just text these two guys. And so I text them too. And of course, in typical Clay fashion, he never said a word. Uh Uh-huh. It's typical Clay. I sent that text at, I'll tell you the exact time I sent that text. Because... I mean, it's a part of the story. Like, why not, right? So I sent that text at 3 a.m. I can't sleep after games. (laughs) Steph texts back at 6. I won't read you all of my texts, but the first line is, so I can't sleep, period. (laughs) Just finished the film again. Period. And then I go into some other things. Steph texts back at 6 a.m. like, can't sleep either. But let me deliver the message before film. Because he know me. Like, I'm coming in. I, 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 like, I haven't slept all night. Like, I, I'm coming in. Like, lock in, motherfucker. He said, but let me deliver the message before film. Before the coaches come in before film tomorrow. Let me deliver. Say no more. And he delivered such a powerful message. It was was incredible. It was, listen, we just got embarrassed last night. We got embarrassed on our home floor with an opportunity to close out a team. And we never showed up. 
He said, if, if you getting on this bus, you making a commitment to this team, I don't care how many minutes you play. I don't care if you don't play a single second. I don't care if it's points, rebounds, whatever it is. But if you getting on this bus, you are saying, I am going to do whatever it takes as far as my preparation goes to win this game. We not going out like that. Like we went out game six, we not going out like that. We have an opportunity to play in game seven. They rare, they don't come around. Take advantage of the moment, embrace the moment. And he went a little further in, but it was such an incredible speech. And when he finished, he said, anybody else got something? Nah, champ, it's enough said. You said it all. When he delivered that speech, I can't say I knew he was going to come out and get 50. But I knew he was going to come out and do something incredible. And I knew there was no way he was going to allow us to lose that game. Masterful performance. GOAT performance. Again, looks like Steph Curry in the NBA Finals. Absolutely incredible. I'm honored to have been there and been a part of that. Wow, incredible. Kevon Looney, 21 rebounds. I said it, I said in film yesterday, I said, man, Trey Lyle's been punking us, man. Trey Lyle's been punking everybody. He punked me, he punked Loon. And Loon said after, after the film, he came up to me, he said, man, Trey Lyle's ain't punked me, man. Don't be throwing that on my resume. I said, listen, Loon, show me then. Loon got a couple of them rebounds in the second half. He said, ain't nobody punking me. I said, yeah, Toon. It was so incredible to watch him dominate his matchup, dominate the game. His offensive rebounds broke their spirit. You could see it with every single one of them. As he got them, their spirit just broke a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more. And then Kavon go crash the glass, and three guys run at him. Somebody else slip in and get an offensive rebound. Our game plan, we executed. Coach Kerr texted me on my way home today, and he said, that may have been the best I've ever seen you guys execute a game plan. It was so fun to watch. The way we executed that game, turnovers, seven turnovers? Seven turnovers? You talking about controlling the pace, controlling the tempo, and not letting the team get out in transition? Because they had struggled against our half-court defense all series. And so you, you, you fall into this trap of like, man, they're scoring a lot, da-da-da. And you start making a bunch of crazy adjustments. And, but actually what you've been doing, been working, what can you clean up? Offensive rebounds. We cleaned the rebounding up. Kevon Looney, 21 rebounds. I think Wiggs has seven or eight rebounds. Um, I think I had six or seven. Clay had maybe seven or eight rebounds. Guys rebounded to eight, Steph, eight rebounds. Guys rebounded the basketball. And it started with the man in the middle, Kevon Looney, holding the fort down, getting every rebound, offensive and defensive. Not only, it obviously changed the game today, but that changed the series. That changed the series. Game three down 0-2, I'm suspended back against the wall. What does he do? Get 20 rebounds. Game five, pivotal, pivotal game five, tied up two to two on the road. What does he do? 20-plus rebounds. Game seven, biggest stage in basketball, biggest stage in sports, 21 rebounds. If you're not impressed, then what, what are we watching? What are we looking at? And what are we looking for? So I take my hat off the loom. Let's not miss the assist he was had all series long. This good decision after good decision after good decision. Continuing to grow, and that's what you love to see. Guy who's battle-tested, been through it all. Stand tall no matter what, I go in a foxhole with him any day. Any day. I was thinking, game five, after game five, I'm like, man, you know what everybody forgot? 
they forgot, man. This Wiggins, that was Wiggins' fifth game in two, three and a half, three months. I know everybody forgot. You want you know how I know everyone forgot? Because I forgot. Tonight he found that aggressiveness. You could tell he's gotten his legs back under him. See what happens is you see he play like a couple of games. And what usually happens when you return from a long layoff is like you have a couple of games and then you're going to tank. And then you start to march back up and you love and you get back to yourself and we he's headed back up. And you saw that aggressiveness tonight. You saw the offensive rebounds. You saw the defense. You saw him locked in. Playoff wigs. Didn't shoot it particularly well, but the energy, loose ball, steals in transition. Don't miss the little things. Wigs was huge tonight. Clay's aggressiveness. Didn't hit shots like he normally does. Even missed two free throws. The aggressiveness, the demonstrativeness. Getting into Keegan Murray changes things. And obviously, they're not leaving him. Steph came up to me. He said, yo, go at like six seconds on the clock. Come and scream me, but don't scream me. Go get Clay." Clay came off and won three. And that felt like like that, that shot took their heart. That was like, man. But I'll tell you something. I know everybody's going to slandered Jordan Poole and been slandering him. But uh, something I always tell Jordan is his attitude and his demeanor, a lot of people follow that on this team. People follow that. And his demeanor tonight was incredible. 71-64, we in a timeout. He come to timeout, he say, hey, man, they getting a little tight now. All of a sudden, floaters short, shot short. They getting a little tight, turn the pressure up now. We fed off that energy. It was huge. It was huge. Malik Monk got it going early and he shut the water off. Then the water got shut off. It was tough and Fox never really found it today. But before I, before I move on, there's a couple more things I want to talk about with this game. Lost a lot of respect. For Sabonis, you don't shake guys' hands after you lose. I don't respect that. I once left the court when we lost in game seven of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I went to my locker room and I sat down and I said, uh, this don't feel right. And I walked back out on the court and I showed everybody love. You lost. Deal with it. Pay your respect. I, I, that was whack to me. That's whack. Like, but I wouldn't necessarily even say lost respect. Like, but I don't respect that. And that's whack. Um, however, Sacramento Kings organization, Sacramento Kings fan base, De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, Mike Brown, and company, I gained a lot of respect for. I always have respect for Mike Brown. And And a lot of times in these playoff series, man, you lead a series and you're like, man, I lost all respect for that guy. He get in these series and, like, tighten up, get soft, like, don't embrace the moment. Like, you lose a lot of respect for guys in these playoff series. I'll tell you. I got a lot of respect for them boys. They showed up. Trey Lyles. They fought. Terrence Davis. Brothers fought, man. I respect Harrison taking less minutes, less of a role as the leader of that team. One of the only few, one of the few guys that has a, has experience in the playoffs, a champion him in Delhi. Terrence Davis got it going these last two games. Harrison ain't played much. Demeanor was upbeat, still talking to his guys. I can respect that. I gained a lot of respect for the Sacramento Kings. So I want to say that, um, that that's not the last we'll see of that group. That group going to have to be reckoned with for years to come in the NBA. And I look forward to the battles, the challenge of it, the competition. And then someday when we are too old, Monk, and we going on, 
seeing what they can put together. That's a, that's a, that's a group that fought, and you got to respect that. I got a lot of respect for those guys. So I wanted to, you know, say that because De'Aaron Fox, he had a tough one tonight. First game seven. There'll be another opportunity. We had a tough one tonight. But the way he carried them guys, his demeanor, leadership. I told y'all when, when me and him got into our back and forth, um, that what game was it? the first game I got back, game four. We got into it because I said something to Keegan Murray. He stepped right in. I can respect that. So many guys that y'all think is him wouldn't say nothing for that guy. I can respect that. So I got a lot of respect, man. Those guys earn my respect. Uh, congratulations to the Sacramento Kings, Vivek Ranadive, uh, Neil Ranadive, um, Mike Brown, on down, Fox, players. Nothing but respect, man. Like I said, those guys will they'll have to be dealt with um, as, as they continue on their journey. As we move forward, it is a quick turnaround. It is already Sunday night, and we play the Lakers on Tuesday evening. Um, I mean, just my initial thoughts, obviously haven't gotten a chance to watch film on them yet, but they're playing very good basketball. Uh, D'Angelo at the point. Austin Reeves, whichever one you consider the point guard, they both have a lot of ball handling responsibilities. Uh, Austin Reeves has been playing lights out for the past two and a half months. Uh, D'Angelo Russell found his stroke those last couple games against Memphis. Rui Hachimura has been playing great basketball. Jared Vanderbilt, Swiss Army Knife, does it all. Uh, obviously, you got LeBron James at the four. Goes without saying. Anthony Davis at the five, goes without saying. Um, Troy Brown coming off the bench. Rui's been coming off the bench as well. Uh, giving these guys great minutes. Malik Beasley coming in shooting. Uh, hadn't found his stroke, but he's a shooter, and you got to respect that. And, and at any moment, you know he can get going. Um, OG D. Ham. Second all matchup, baby. Looking forward to that. It'll be a tough matchup. You know, this team has been playing better basketball, as good a, or better basketball as anybody in the league uh, since the trade deadline. They're, they are a complete team. Um, the vibes around the team is great. They play really good brand of basketball. They defend. Uh, they have they present some challenges on the offensive end as well. Um, it'll be up to us to, to meet that force with force. You know they're going to rebound the basketball. They've done that incredibly well. And then also for us to get into the things that we're going to need to get into from an offensive standpoint. You can't allow them to turn you over and get out in transition. They're tough in transition, uh, as anybody is. Um, AD's been playing out of his mind defensively. I think he averaged five and a half blocks a game last series over the course of six games. That's incredible. Um, you know, so it's a really good team. It'll be a tough matchup, uh, you know, they, they, they do play a lot of size, you know, and so a lot of length. Uh, they have Jared Vanderbilt's guard and point guards at 6'9". Um, you know, so they play a lot of length. Um, it'll be a chess match, as it always is. Steve Kerr is great in those. Uh, always trust Steve in a chess match. Uh, you know, he was to, great in this past series. He's always been great, so I'm looking forward to actually getting our game plan tomorrow, but... It'll be a good series. And then obviously, you know, you got Steph versus LeBron. It's the first time we've seen this since 2018. And it's also, and it's the very first time we've, we've seen this before the NBA Finals. I'm not sure if there's ever been a Warriors-Lakers matchup or meaningful matchup at any point in this, you know, playoffs. I'm excited about this. I'm really excited about this. You, you know, it's the Lakers. Uh, it's Los Angeles, and it's the motherfucking dubs, baby. Gotta love it. Gotta appreciate it. Bay Area, stand up. So I'm looking forward to this matchup. It'll be a hard-fought matchup. Um, they're not laying down. We're not laying down. You know, they got, they got a goat. We got a goat. Gotta love it. 
I'm looking forward to it. Before we get out of here, uh, the Heat goes up 1-0 on the Knicks. Stephen A's worst nightmare. Stephen A, much love, my brother. Good luck to your Knicks. Um, Jimmy Butler is still playing out of his mind. I wouldn't necessarily say out of his mind because Jimmy has shown to be that guy, you know. So, but he's playing incredible basketball. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Julius Randle gets back for game two. You definitely don't want to go down 0-2 headed to South Beach. Um, I think with them losing 0-1, he was shooting a day. He'll be out there in game two. But he's missed some time these last few weeks and rhythm and all of that starts to come into play. Conditioning. Fit. Because now they got to fit him in. Like, it's not like you're just sticking somebody. Julius has the ball a lot in that offense, so then guys got to find their spots, you know, and where they get their shots. And so it's a lot of moving parts in that series. But the Heat takes a 1-0 lead. The Denver Nuggets takes a 1-0 lead versus the Suns. I actually got a chance to watch that game. Uh, Jamal Murray. Wow. What a performance. Incredible performance. Bruce Brown. Big, big, big pickup for the Denver Nuggets. Changes a lot of things for those guys. Uh, Bruce Brown and KCP, Michael Porter Jr. being healthy. Uh, Joker didn't even have it really going well uh, with his scoring, but rebounded the hell out of the ball. Rebounded the ball, absolutely incredible. Uh, and they took a 1-0 lead. Um, it was an analytical person's dream and a non-analytical person nightmare. D book. Shot very efficient, didn't shoot threes. The Phoenix Suns didn't shoot many threes. But they shot well. And Denver, as you know, won by 20. So the analytical guys were seeing that and eating that up. Shoot the three, shoot the three, shoot the three. It'll be interesting to see uh, what adjustments the Suns will make uh, going into game two. And then tomorrow, we have the game one of Boston versus Philly absolutely sucks that Joel Embiid is doubtful to play, probably will be out for the first couple games. You're talking to LCL spring four to six weeks. Uh, if he gets back in three, you're lucky. Um, I'm not even sure if it's been two full weeks um, since, he's, since he's been hurt. You hate to see that. Uh, this is the matchup everybody's been wanting to see all year in the Eastern Conference, and now Joel goes down. You hate to see it. Hope he gets back. Wishing him a speedy recovery. But you all should understand, health is a big part of the playoffs. Making it to the end healthy is a big part of who's win, who wins. And I know people will say, quick, oh, this person will hurt. That's a part of it. Your durability and how long you can go. Now, obviously, he had a, like, bang, bang play. You hate to see those. Team that stays the healthiest, that's a big part of it. It's a part of the playoffs. Got to get through it. See if James Harden can, can remuster some of that Houston days and make everything happen. Maybe you still game one at home without Joel. Then that leaves less pressure for Joel. As, as long as they win, it leaves less pressure for Joel to get back. More time for him to recover. You start losing, changes things. Then it's like, man, he really can't, like, there's just nothing you can do. So we'll see. I wish him a speedy recovery. Looking forward to checking that series out tomorrow. But most importantly, I am looking forward to getting the film, getting our game plan, and getting ready for these Lakers. Till next time, that's a wrap from the Draymond Green Show. Peace. Oh, yeah. Light the beam. Light it. Light the beam. Peace. What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward.